44 existing labor laws are consolidated to four labor codes. The first was code on wages. Four laws are repealing existing laws. Minimum Wages Act, Equal Remuneration Act, and the Payment of Wages Act, Payment of Bonus Act. That was passed by Parliament without referring to Labour Standing Committee. A Standing Committee or Selective Committee is an instrument for scrutinizing the legislation. But that process was not followed during the, the, the period of this bill. Because government was in a hurry to pass this employer friendly legislation. In the code on wages, the existing uh, uh, rights of the workmen has drastically changed. What I can say regarding the minimum wages, as per the previous act, Minimum Wages Act, the state government has the right to appoint state-wide Minimum Wages Advisory Board and constitute Minimum Wages Committee on each schedule of employment and fix a minimum wage. Now the new law says that recommendation of Minimum Wages Advisory Board is not mandatory to the government. Government is fixing a national floor level minimum wage. It says that per day 174 rupees will be the minimum wage applicable to the whole nation. No government should fix a wage below 174. What happens is the workers and the trade unions were demanding 600 rupees per day as minimum wage. That was the earlier slogan. slogan. Now, during this the national strike in coming on 8th January 2020, trade unions changed their slogan to 21,000 per month as minimum wage. The earlier uh, 18,000 rupees minimum wage was based on the recommendation of 7th Pay Commission and it was endorsed by 46th Indian Labour Conference. In a particular case came before the Honourable Supreme Court, Supreme Court endorsed that recommendation. It is all have gone. Central government had appointed an expert committee to recommend minimum wage. That committee recommended 374 rupees as minimum wage per day. But in this bill, that recommendation also ignored and government proposed 174 rupees as minimum wage. It is very unfortunate. Nobody in unorganized sector and nobody where the trade unions are very weak, they are not, they will not get anything higher than what is stipulated in this law. That is one point. This is actually a starvation wage. This 174 is actually a starvation wage. Nothing, nothing uh, they, can, they can do with these meager wages. In, the, in our country, 92% of the workforce are working in informal sector. They, they have uh, no social security scheme. They have no better wage scheme or any other pension scheme or like that. And moreover, in organized sector also, a vast majority of work is going to informal sector. The managements are informalizing the work. In central public sector, 52% uh, of the total workforce are contract workers or daily wage workers. In organized uh, private sector industries, 74% of workers are contract workers or casual workers or daily wage workers. So the number of uh, permanent workers in organized sector also is shrinking. That, that, that heavily uh, affects the trade union movement because the casual workers or contract workers 
cannot uh, organize a trade union and bargain with the management because they are temporarily appointed or casually appointed. They can be removed at any time. They can be removed by advising the contractor, you should not send so and so to the factory or to the work site. Then, then their job will be uh, come to an end. So in this situation, such workers cannot form a trade union and conduct a collective bargaining and weaken in the trade union movement in the country. That lead to huge wealth, uh, what I say, accumulation in the hands of capitalists. That is what is happening now. The purchasing capacity of the working class, the population is going down. That's badly affected our market and our economy is in big slowdown because of the lowest purchasing capacity of the people. Farmers and these work poor workers are not getting enough wages to purchase the industrial products. Not only the luxury items, the fast moving goods are also not uh, selling according to the uh, production. It badly affected the industrial area. Industrial production rate is going down and total economy is going down. It will uh, increase in the coming days. Most of the political parties in opposition are bourgeois parties. They have no different opinion with this neoliberal policies. Neoliberal policy is the driving force behind the new enactment. Indian National Congress and other state bourgeois parties, regional bourgeois parties, all are supporting the neoliberal policies. When the bill came to consideration in Rajya Sabha, only left was opposing this bill. When it was put for vote, eight vote for what was against the law. That eight came from six left, one from DMK and one from Samajwadi party. All other opposition parties supported the BJP's initiative, this draconian bill. In Lok Sabha, unfortunately, there was not clear-cut voting also. Voice vote it was passed. CPM, CPI members, all together it is number five. They demand voting, but in the voice of BJP and NDA members, it was ignored and uh, speaker uh, announced that the bill is passed. That is what has happened in the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. See, this is for the industrial classes. So they welcome this. They were demanding long years. They were demanding for changes in the labor laws. Labor flexibility is the slogan of capitalist classes. Worldwide they are demanding that. Worldwide after the collapse of Soviet Union, when the socialist bloc was weakened, world capitalist put their conditions on working people uh, and uh, systematically they uh, what I say, these industries were uh, reorganized. Uh, one product, for example, one car, the entire car manufacturing in one place instead of that, they are manufacturing a product in different places, parts, 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 and assembling in another point. Only the marketing activity is done by the corporate office. So the workforce are disintegrated, they are divided. They cannot come unitedly, the entire workforce can't come unitedly to fight against their masters. That situation has created by the capitalist classes. It was introduced in India also after 1991. The successive governments were keenly arguing for this policy. But the working people, worker, workers, trade unions, entire trade unions has resisted it. At that point of time, all trade unions were united. But when BJP came to power, the number one trade union as per the verification of the central government is BMS, a RSS led trade union. They withdrawn from the United Front and BMS was keeping away from all agitations and strikes. So the entire trade union movement is weakened. That is utilizing by the government and their bosses, their cronies. 
and making this labor laws more favorably or labor, uh, employer friendly. So the employer classes and their associations are welcoming these laws. Yes, in the uh, industrial relations code that is coming, that has been introduced in Lok Sabha, it may come to Jaya Sabha also, whether it may be referred to Labor Standing Committee, we are not sure. In that, fixed term employment is legalized. Earlier it was a notification, now it is legalized. Now any employer can employ new employees as fixed term employee for a tenure of two years, four years, three years, whatever they like. For getting gratuity, a worker had to complete five years term. Now there is no chance to complete the five year term. And if an employer willing to return that worker even before his full term, a notice prayer, 14 days prayer notice is enough, he can be thrown out. In such a situation, these fixed term employees cannot come to a trade union because they will they are afraid of retrenchment at any time. So without a strong trade union, they cannot get permanent employment and they cannot achieve anything from their employers. So their wages and other benefits will go down further. It will badly affect the entire economy. They are talking about ease of doing business. Earlier when Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister of Britain, she told that doing business is, the, is not the business of government. That is what repeating by the present minister. He is also saying doing business is not the business of the government. So government is handing over all the public sector companies and production activities to private hands. That is the neoliberal policy. Then what happens is the workers who are the wealth creators do not get a reasonable share from the created wealth and they will be compelled to live with these starving wages. The, end, the most majority of the wealth created by this workforce will go to the hands of capitalists. So the income inequality will, will, will further, further worsen or further increase. As per the Oxfam report, in 2018, in India, the total wealth created in that year, for 52 percent of the wealth has gone to the hands of the top 1 percent. 78 percent has gone to the hands of top 10 percent. The 50 percent at the bottom, they, have, they could not increase a single piece in their income. That is what is happening in the India. It will further uh, wide, uh, may wide the gap between the haves and the have nots. So the industry cannot survive in this situation. Earlier government was thinking of exporting their goods if it is not able to sell in the domestic market. Export was the other arena which is in their mind. In the, in the uh, globalized world market every, everybody can enter that was the thesis what they was uh, uh, advocating. But now you can see the trade war between China and US and world over world economy is also in recession, world trade is coming down. In this situation we cannot increase our export, our products should be sold in the domestic market itself. But that domestic market is not developing only because of the workers and poor farmers and agricultural workers are not getting new, uh, genuine wage in their hand to purchase the industrial production that will be a disastrous to the future of our country.